So we've just unrolled the self-tacking jib at the moment, but obviously still carrying that asymmetric on a snuffer. Um, and that isn't allowing us at the moment to match sort of six knot wind speeds. I mean, I don't, should you be surprised? Perhaps not. It's a trimaran. Light displacement around 13 tonnes. This one, I think, has got a lot of options on. It's more like 16. But she is moving through the water quite handsomely. You can see that windward float not even touching the water. Very fine entry bows. So very little disturbance on the water there at all. In fact, dreadnought bows as well on the floats. So it's quiet and efficient under sail and motor. the windward hull is not even in the water and this is sailing in five or six knots with breeze. difference with sailing a trimaran and a cat there's a gentle breeze here but we are certainly still healing the walk around we filmed at the Grand March show was pretty very popular been viewed a lot of times so we won't do another full one but It is easy to tell, both when boarding the boat and when sailing it, why it does hold its appeal. I mean, yes, that is a phenomenal amount of space, but that doesn't seem to carry the penalties of performance. And that is based around the concept of all of the weight being centered in the boat, both talking about from side to side and fore and aft. So all the machinery space is right under us here in that huge ship style engine room. And the effect I think with sailing it is more like, it's actually more comparable to a to monohull, single rudder and there's, you can feel the increases in wind, you can feel a bit of tilt as well. But yeah, I guess this is what it's all about. What Neil called the cockloon, so the ability of those bifold doors to open right out to make this saloon and cockpit area one. And all the furnishings here made out of sort of polyester fabric and the floor, easy to clean. A lot of, that, lot of social space there. And that's, uh, you can sit, I don't know, 12 people around those two tables. That, first one here is a it, sort of cocktail table in that or coffee table in that guys but then raises up electrically using the switch there and then that pushes the galley forward so yeah pretty lovely place to prepare your food from nice bit of ventilation coming through there lovely forward views this is one of the other main signature pieces of the Neil is having the owner's cabin on this one level. You're never having to go up and down steps. And that is a pretty nice view to wake up to. Oh, I can't 
just want to go and make my cup of coffee. Oh, there I am. So this is the porthole. It's one layer only. And it's sort of like a slightly condensed version of a owner's hull in a similar size catamaran in that you get the lion's share of a full hull. Plenty of space, plenty of headroom and privacy in all three guest cabins. The starboard hull's the same. And the only thing that is really slightly different is the forward central guest cabin because that same size, queen size berth, but the heads itself is separate shower there and the heads behind the door uh, and that just means it's actually quite a useful day heads stowage on this boat is phenomenal Reasonably quiet under engine. And if you haven't seen this before, welcome to another one of my favourite parts of the Neo 51. A full size standing headroom machinery area. <laughs> it's like a ship's engine room. All your plumbing, water maker, hot water maker, generator, and then the electrics on that side. Talk about room, hang on, let me close that. Talk about room to work at the engine. So, under the starboard aft quarter here, separate washer and dryer. That is a proper laundry room. can also be a skipper's cabin as well. Don't get me wrong, this is a lot of boat to look after, to manoeuvre, to park, but if, like the owners of this number three, you're going off trade wind sailing, blue water cruising, going across the Atlantic to Brazil and then on to the Pacific. That space is just pretty sensational, really. So, why are people buying these big multi hulls? It's probably not about the performance, it's definitely about the space. But equally, with that comes privacy. There are six other people on this boat. I don't know where they are. There's a couple on the flybridge, a couple at the helm station. But whatever cabin you're in, 
you're getting some good privacy. So if you like your own space and you like a lot of space, this is the boat for you. And if I had 800 odd thousand euros and a couple of years off to cruise the Pacific, might be the boat for me too.